1929, youth from the Zionist pro-fascist group Betar demonstrate in Jerusalem's old city at the Western Wall. Palestinian counter-demonstrations escalate to riots. 67 from the ancient Jewish community of Hebron are murdered, with surviving refugees evacuated. 80 years later, Israel exists with a mixed Jewish and Palestinian population, but without recognized borders. Beyond the armistice lines, nearly 4 million Palestinians live under military occupation amid 360,000 armed settlers. In 2005 and 2006, the Council of the National Interests sent observers to the Palestinian presidential and legislative elections. The following documentary is one result of those missions. It's like there's a subcall in the Israeli society as we know that some shit is going on there to protect us. But please don't bring it back home. Hmm. It's like you, you realize that the checkpoints are not only to prevent Palestinians to, in, to invade Israel. It's also to prevent the reality from the occupied territories to invade Israel. Like in front of foreign people, they, you know, we justify and stand behind every action we did. And then I started to ask them, look, when now you invade Aza or Deir al-Balakh with your APCs and tanks, do you run over cars? And I'm not talking about you have to arrest a suspicious Palestinian, there is a narrow road, so you have, and there's a car, so you run over it. I'm talking about going in, you know, big street in Gaza, and you see a, a new Mercedes on the side, and you want to take it with, with you while going there. And he said, oh, of course, but we have to frighten them. Yeah. And when you enter the city, do you fire at the uh, water tanks in the room? Oh, of course, but that's to frighten them, and et cetera, et cetera. And then I realized, and I think there is no day since then that I don't realize a new thing about what wow. I I realized that he is my mirror half a year ago. Because if you would ask me, are you crazy? Firing grenades into a neighborhood? Of course, we have to fight in them. They should be afraid of us. You can see the skull wall straight yes. through. My, follow my hand if you can. Right. The skull wall, the minaret, straight through, and the black roof. That is the tomb of Abraham, where is also buried Sarah, Isaac, Rebecca, and Jacob. And this is and the Ibrahimi Mosque? It's called the Ibrahimi Mosque, or the Tomb of Abraham, yeah. the Cave of Machpelah mm. in the Old Testament. Just over there, the top of there. Yeah, Straight through the and main mosque in front of you now. The walls were built by Herod the Great. It's very mm. ancient, of course, and it's the reason why we're all here, really. It's mm -hmm. a, this is a very religious spot for the three religions of the book. Oh. From the time of Baruch Goldstein, when he oh, yeah. uh, slaughtered the... Uh, in the Muslims at prayer in the mosque, right. 1994, and um, ever since then, uh, well, these, these, this was the vegetable market of right. the uh, yeah. Palestinians, a thriving vegetable market until then. You have this, to see it from the this, other side to get the full. Yeah. yeah, this building right in front of us was like a hotel for the vegetable marketers when they came in mm -hmm. at different times during the week. So all of this was vacated in the couple of weeks after the massacre in, in uh, 1994, and the settlers took, took over, you might say. Mm -hmm. and they've been there so Goldstein got, got his wish. And he got his wish. I still remember with great pain what happened uh, in 94, when you remember Baruch Goldstein, who was a doctor, by the way, a medical doctor, who entered in the Ibrahimi mosque and showered the, the Palestinians who were praying in the mosque. 
killing over 30. And when the Palestinian society in Hebron was protesting that day, another 30 were killed by the Israeli army. So over 60 were killed. And uh, the settlement nearby of Hebron, also populated with those extremist uh, wing of ideological settlers, they erected a monument for that hero, Dr. Baruch Gang, who's a mass murderer. And if you remember, unfortunately, the Israeli government then, led by Rabin, faltered because Israeli public opinion was ripe and willing then for a few days to withdraw the settlers out of Hebron because they were seen as a fanatic wing that could continuously provoke the tension and friction that would perpetuate the conflict. Unfortunately then, Rabin did not capture the moment, seized the opportunity, hesitated, and decided not to withdraw the settlers, even though in public opinion, in Israeli public opinion, there was a comfortable majority. And if you remember, it was that massacre in the mosque that triggered a wave of suicide bombing and introduced that method in Palestinian-Israeli confrontations. Uh, so the Hebron illegal settler community is really guilty of having poisoned relations, of continuously managing Machiavellically to escalate tensions, create friction. And I always had the opinion that the peace process, I'm speaking 93, 94, 95, was going to fail or succeed in Hebron and from Hebron. And unfortunately, it kept failing because of those settlers that were left there unleashed against the civilian population. One of the things that, that we can say, and we've documented for the last 10 years, is the fact that the agreements that were made, some of which the United States signed on to, have not been um, fulfilled at all. Um, Shuhada Street was supposed to be open to Palestinian traffic, and if you were up on the roof, <coughs> you saw that it's not only not open to Palestinian vehicular traffic, they can't even walk on it for the most part. And now there's fences, all gates and, and, and walls all around the, the old city is locked in. Um, USAID, 
paid for the infrastructure. This was all part of the Hebron Protocol in January of 1997. And none of this has been, uh, the, the vegetable market was supposed to be reopened. The, the largest vegetable market, the largest wholesale market in the southern part of the West Bank, that was part of the Oslo II agreement. And not only was it not reopened, uh, a few years ago, um, Palestine, or I mean, uh, um, Israeli settler activist came through and they burned shops uh, in the old city. They, uh, we've kind of witnessed all of these things and the situation just kind of getting worse and worse. Even though it's quieter than it was a few years ago, this is a ghost town. It's not a good quiet. We used to have a lot of neighbors. We had neighbors upstairs, we had neighbors across the street. The neighbors uh, across the street, um, it became a closed military zone. Israel made it a closed military zone, built the wall, welded the uh, shops shut, and um, that enclosed the city in such a way that that uh, people were afraid to live here because how could they send their teenagers to school in H1 if soldiers would be stopping them at every point and, and they would face arrest or harassment or at least detainment and sometimes worse. Think of where we are right now and the, the old city proper. Think of it as a prison, basically, yeah. with gates. So, so the Israelis control the gates of the prison. The settlers here in this area um, sort of claim the whole city psychologically. So anything that's near them or, or <coughs> if you go down um, into the souk, you'll see that there's had to be some netting put in because um, the Abraham Avinu um, settlement people were throwing garbage down just into the alleyways. Um, so there's, um, for me, it, it, it's a shame that these 420 some settlers here with, what is it, 1,500 soldiers to protect them is holding this whole city really under siege. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're election observers. To welcome, to welcome to Abraham Avino, to Abraham Mosk. Abraham Mosk, come here. Come here, look So this is now coming up to the mosque where they have to go through a checkpoint. Yeah.
they're all so there are ten families living in here, but none of them can open their shops on the right. Or in here, see that? And the right thing they're from the left. They're not allowed to open their shops. They're not allowed to open. And this is second. This is just second. Where are you coming in? You're just the right. So what do, you think, no. what do you think the ultimate goal is? I mean, like their ultimate goal is to drive everyone out of Hebron and to the Israeli become, government Hebron yes. become Jewish. Yes, That's, that would be the goal. Before one year, this mountain was full of trees and forests, and it was green. And now you see. All of it is settlement. One year. You see uh, the road between these two mountains? That road, yeah. they do it uh, this year for two months only uh, to uh, separate uh, us between Jerusalem. And uh, there is a big wall between near the road, so we can't go there. A fence, and a road, and a lot of fence. Oh, I Not, see. Uh, yeah, I see. Here. Here fence, but uh, on the other side of the wall, the road and the big fence, we can see go there. And <coughs> they refused uh, us uh, to, if you, we want to build a new house now, it's uh, forbidden for us. This is uh, uh, near the road, we can't build. That, that construction there, uh, the, the, the dirt, that area, is that the settlement? Is that new? A new, new yeah, building? Yeah, all of this is a new building. This is a, this For the settlement? This, yeah, this is uh, 2004 they built it. Last year. And they all, uh, they are uh, building now. They are continuous building. To make it bigger and bigger. It used to be a forested hill. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, uh, you see the other months there? Yes. Uh, big, all of the trees, uh, this is like this. And these were among the most heavily yeah. forested hilltops in Palestine. <laughs> yeah. So they cut the trees? Yes, cut the trees and make the settlement. They choose uh, the highest and the beautiful uh, wow. lands and make their settlement. Uh, this church, uh, this church uh, is forbidden for us. It is the beginning of Jerusalem. And we are usually to visit her, but uh, now we can't because it's uh, after the fence. And uh, this is the Green Mountain is the beginning of Jerusalem. Uh, this is a settlement, uh, Abu Ghanim, and uh, behind it there's Abu Dis. Abu Dis village now is uh, between her and between Jerusalem. There is a big, a big wall forbidden for uh, Abu Dis. Uh, uh, people to enter Jerusalem. And the, uh, this fence is uh, continuous for the big wall.
So what are you waiting for? Speak English? Like in the gym. I didn't like in the gym. What are people waiting for? To change uh, passport, to check something. But it looks like the jail. You see the people looks like the jail. They are waiting early in the morning. Very, very early in the morning they are waiting. Many hours they are must wait. The girls, they are pregnant. Old people. It's not good. Is this to get ID cards? That, that's right. Yeah, that's that's the way. If somebody want to divorce. It's better for him to work, wait here maybe one week or to marry. It looks very bad. Very bad. It looks very bad. It looks very bad, really. And they have to go in here? Yeah, they yeah, have to go inside.
Son, son!
Do you see him? The black gate right there. It's a black gate. It's between East and West Jerusalem, and this gate uh, cross the Al-Azariya from Jerusalem. If someone try to enter from side to side, he used, he have to jump from this uh, gate. And if the soldier, the army, catch him, they will shoot him right away. Or they arrest him. Because this means West Bank, another side means Jerusalem. Yeah. How long would it take to drive from here to the other side? I'm a refugee. Yeah, yeah, you're a refugee. Yeah, yeah. So I'm now refugee. you're living in Hebron. No, no I living in Arubkam now. Arubkam, yes. which is the same thing. Yes, you're in Hebron. Near now. Hebron. Near Hebron. <laughs> and, near Hebron. And you come every day to work in Jerusalem, in, in Jerusalem. because this is where he has worked on all his life. I am supervisor life. in Jerusalem. But tell, tell what you do now every morning. In the morning, I jump from the wall near Abu Dis. Yeah. Because the Israel authorities prevent uh, us to enter Jerusalem. Yeah. And they didn't uh, give us a card yeah. to enter the Jerusalem. Even though you have a job as a, as a supervisor of education. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And in the evening, when I go to the home, I jump also from the wall. Could you walk down right by the wall? I got goat. Sure? Sure? Had the goat. Had the goat. I got goat. Oh, you got goat.
It's a Kodak moment, I missed it. <laughs> nice camera. Very, very nice camera. Oh. So you're 18 and a half years old. Have you and you're from Russia. Going back to the I was born in Russia. Born in Russia. Are you artistic? Well, uh, Musical? Painting? Very well, I bet. <laughs> Where are you from? You have in the distance East Jerusalem and you have these hills that are empty except for Bedouin and nobody will consider them as being on the planet. Um, those hills are E1 and that's what's due to be filled in. They're building the hills over here, the empty hills, all of them. Everything you can see that is empty is E1. It's 12 square kilometers. The actual building of 3,500 units that is planned yeah. is on that hill over there and the next one. That's the first phase. So we're actually in Male Adumim, the city due east of Jerusalem, as you saw on the road when we arrived, 10 minutes away, by a new settler bypass road. For settlers only, we call them apartheid roads that uh, goes under the Mount uh, Scopus in a tunnel there. So this settlement city was in 1991, 15,000 people. It's now 30,000. But what you see ahead of you there is a development that is going to 50% increase the population within a year or two. So it's going to go from 30,000 up to 45,000. The ultimate aim in the next 10 years is 70,000.
So this is sewage running from the settlement into the river. Into the valley, yeah. Into the valley. It's you drive on this kilometers yeah. where it's all planted with different vegetables and fruits in this valley. Historically, the people of the area here were living on this valley. Uh, now they can't do anymore because the fresh water that comes from the springs is already polluted with the sewage water that you see here. And I think this is part of the war against the Palestinians' existence and living on their land, taking out the resources that they could live from. This is Nablus, yeah, we enter oh, yeah, Nablus. Look at all yes. these people patiently waiting. So these little fuckers can look, look to this old lady. Can I be tackled? Uh, yeah, that's how you really feel. <laughs> Look, she said, I can't, uh, he wants her to go in that lane with the, to, to wait here for, with, like, all the people. Yeah, yeah. She's hardly He's going to let her go? Oh, oh kiss his I hand. Kiss That's great. There. Oh. oh. Go ahead, I hope you're taping. I'm taking. <laughs> I haven't seen one like that. Um, this is Ted. Can you take a picture? No. Oh. I'm sorry. It's too late. From one side, a line of cars wanting to get out, and from the other side, a line of cars wanting to pass. A huge line. And suddenly you have a mighty force at the tip of your fingers, as if playing a computer game. I stand here like this, pointing at someone, gesturing to you to do this or that, and you do this or that. The car starts, moves toward me, falls beside me, the next car follows, you signal, and stops. You start playing with them like a computer game. You come here, you go there, like this. You barely move, you make them obey the tip of your finger. It's a mighty feeling. Look at that, look at that, to the right side. As I told you, the most disturbing thing to me is that there is absolutely wild west in the occupied territories. Brigade commanders, regiment commanders, company commanders do whatever comes to their mind. No one checks them. No one stops them. We got in for many nights in the Nablus Kasbah, and our firing orders were between 2 to 4 a.m. Anybody spotted in the Kasbah is doomed to die. These were the words, doomed to die. He wasn't a Zionist lover, don't worry. A man who walks in these hours in the Kasbah of Nablus is not armed. Don't worry, he, had, he probably had in mind a terrorist agenda.
You are welcome. Peter. Good seeing you. You are welcome, sir. You are welcome. Come in. This wall, it, it affects the relation of Palestinians uh, themselves. It's, it's a, a separation between Kalkila uh, uh, as a center and the nearby Palestinian villages. We have about 32 Palestinian villages. And uh, between the Palestinians and, the, and their land, this is Kalkila, for instance, what you have here. This is Kalkila, and this is the wall. Mm -hmm. And you came through here. And the villages here and villages here, we have no ability to, 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 to go there unless we have to cross via Israeli gates. There is gates in this wall, two gates, one in the north, one in the south. And you have to go through these gates. Even to go to your land in this area, you have to go through a gate here and a gate here in the north and the gate in the south. And you have to, you know, this gate is opened uh, three times a day, 15 minutes every time. This is concerning our Palestinian people, our neighbors. And something else when I say that uh, from Kfar Saba, we are four kilometers. From nearby small villages, we are just one kilometer. So people, Israelis, used to come to Kalkila on foot. There is no need to use their cars. They are coming on foot from Kalkila to, to, from uh, nearby uh, small villages. It's just about one kilo. Even Mr. Uh, Barak, living in a nearby settlement, Kukhav Yair, its name, is just one kilometer from Kalkidia. So we used to have this daily relation. It is on the social level. People uh, know each other. I mean, family to family relation. I'm not speaking as, as a mayor. I'm speaking about as a citizen here. We used to, to have this. Family to family relation with Israelis. Even in wedding occasions, in good occasions, we used to participate. In, 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 on sad occasions, we used to participate together. Mm -hmm. When you come to Kalkila, not only on, on weekends, at any time you come to Kalkila, you find Israelis here. And they are coming to our homes, not coming just for shopping here to Kalkila. We have this family to family relation. If the Israelis are saying that this wall is constructed for peace, for security, Okay, we, we respect this, but they have to do it on the international borders, but not to construct this wall within the master plan of our towns and villages, not to isolate us from our land. For instance, to, to go to your land here, you're supposed to pass through a checkpoint or a gate, we call it. This is one of the gates of Jayus. Right. And the soldiers are here, they are opening, it's written here, the times that they are opening. Just they are opening three times a day. And even for children going to school, they have to, to, to be stopped here for hours to allow them to cross. Because in the morning, sometimes, sometimes they say that it's a military area. If it is a military area or there is some military activities, they say, or security activities, if there's a security activity, children have to stay. You know, it's a Palestinian land. If they'd like to have their military activities, they can do it inside Israel, not within Palestine. And so, no, I didn't hear that there is an army doing, doing activities within towns and villages. They have their country, they can do wherever they want, but not, not within our uh, villages, not within our, our towns. So they make our life so complicated. And it's, it's for, for the extremists. It's for, for, for the benefit of the extremists on both sides. I mean the extremists on our side and the extremists on their side, that if our life is complicated and difficult, and if the unemployment in the town is 64%, and people have nothing for, for, for the, the food of their families, so the, the people, you know, they shift. From the moderate parties, they shift to the extremists. Other religious or left parties, you know, accepting the idea of, you know, uh, of military resistance. Well, in Kalkilia, we have 50% of the water in the West Bank is in Kalkilia area. And this is one of the reasons That's why, why the Israelis, I can show these spots, there are 19 aquifer wells, these spots. They are on the other side of the wall, if you, these ones. And these spots here, they are also wells of water. So now, 32% of our water is on the other side of the wall. And,
This wall is, as you see, a blind wall without any gate to be able to cross to yeah. their land. And we have no access to our land on the other side of a wall. And they constructed a highway on, on our land by an, a Canadian-Israeli company. Canadian-Israeli company. On the other side. On the other side, it's a highway called Crossing Israel, triple six road. It's a, a joint business, Canadian-Israeli one. Oh. Oh. And there's a guard tower too, isn't there? Didn't I yes, see one? Yes, every 300 yeah. meters, they have this kind of tower for controlling, and they have these sensitive equipments or to these cameras. Oh, they, yeah. have fixed, they have fixed cameras here. Take a oh. So if, what we say that if you have this high uh, techniques, so there is no need, to, no need to take the land. You can construct on the border. Yeah. Okay. And you can control by these techniques yeah. we have. Yeah. Why to come? Why to come just 27 meters from our homes? And, and another area yeah. I'm going to show you. Yeah, that, uh, that sort of that has always puzzled me because obviously the wall doesn't provide security, and it's an enormous expense. Yes. Uh, but but apparently they want it, it's sort of an in-your-face type thing to show how big, and massive it is. But but to control the traffic across it, you don't have to have a wall yes, like yeah, that. There is no need for this. And 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 then the other uh, the truth is that the the, the the terrorists who really want to do harm uh, are not troubled by a wall. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's so easy. Yeah, it's so easy for who'd like to to commit suicide to go to Israel, not to through the wall. Yeah, there are other accesses to go through. We, we remember the, the Chinese wall, yes. the Berlin wall, yes. and, and, and even Hadrian's wall, you know, across Britain. And, and I suppose for a, for a limited time they weren't, but it didn't take long. Technology and other ingenuity uh, would get around the wall, and so, and so there was no security. You are right. You are right. This will not give security. No. There is a gate over there, a gate, oh, it's yeah. closed 24 hours, and no one is allowed to cross. And even if you go now together, they will shout on us. Oh. Yes. And as I told you, there was here stores, uh, cafes, yeah. restaurants, they all destroyed. Yeah. And God, the expense that they have to, to it's bear. It's one kilometer, one million dollars. Yeah. In Calcilia area, it's 35 kilometers yeah. long. But then they have to, ar to, to, to man it and patrol it. 20, and 24 hours, there is a soldier in, the, in the, the tower, and there is these sensitive cameras, while there is no need for all this. There is no need for this, you know, just spending money like this without yeah. having any, any, any interest, any benefits for yeah. this. And this is, you know, a sign over there oh. saying that, uh, it's dangerous area and they may shoot if you <laughs> if you <laughs> close and you are close they may they have the right to, to, to but, shoot but, you. But why the barbed wire? Yeah. Uh, there is a trench and there is a barber, you know. Yeah, but you can't get over the wall. No, anyway. no way, so, no so way. Why? And no way. You know something that if you'd like to think it in logical, we don't find any reason huh? for this. There is no reason for well, this. Well, the only thing I can think of is the, 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 the uh, again, it gets that sort of in-your-face, showing how how massive it is, uh, possibly with some supposed psychological effect. Yes, psychological. yes, this is what I mentioned that always that it's the whole the whole uh, the whole uh, goal or the whole aim is to defeat the spirit of people. Yeah, it's nothing secure. It's the spirit and the the, the will of people to be the spirit, the psychology of people to be affected by this. But I'd have to say, from what I have seen in these few days, uh, they haven't done it. That that I find that the spirit, the spirit and the optimism yes. is more than I have. Yes. Uh, I'm pessimistic about the future, but I find people here are much more optimistic yes, than I people, am. People, you know, as people, uh, when you feel that it's your land, it's your home, 
whatever uh, procedures are done, you are not going to give up yeah. and to find some place else in another, in another uh, country. So yeah. this is the only thing that people are thinking that how to make their life possible. Yeah. Yeah, not, yeah. To, not to move out. What the Israelis want that people will move out. Life is life is precious, yes. and and uh, and and freedom is still the most powerful force in the world. And uh, I think that yearning for freedom, mortal danger, yeah, militarism. So don't don't try to crawl through that barbed wire. Uh, I'm a, a correspondent of Japanese newspaper Mainichi oh. Masato oh, yeah. Kaiho, and I just want to uh, hear your impression about this wall. This is the first time for you to see. I broke into mm. tears mm. earlier mm. When, when we stopped at the, at the, at the interior ministry mm. watching mm. these women mm. who, who had been standing there for hours mm. uh, waiting to get inside mm. to get a, a simple, you know, uh, identification card mm. or, or a birth certificate mm. or any of these others. Mm. Stand, the door was closed. Mm. Here they're standing there, had been standing mm. there. God knows how many hours they will continue to stand there. And it's heartbreaking. Mm. Mm. It, it, so it, it, is, it is inhuman. Mm. It, 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 we're, seeing, we're seeing here man's inhumanity to man. Mm. Uh, mm. You know, and, and, Mm. And you feel so frustrated mm. and ho hopeless and and angry. Mm. And, and what what do you want to appeal to Americans after you go back to United States? I th I think the key mm. is is to <clears throat> is to help them know what is happening mm. here. Uh, people talk about changing American mm. opinion. Mm. I don't think most Americans have an opinion because they don't have any factual basis uh -huh. to have an opinion. Uh -huh. And so I think uh, the best thing we, we and uh -huh. others can do uh -huh. is to help them understand just what the facts uh -huh. are, uh, what is happening here, yes. and, and how the Palestinians uh -huh. Uh, are being made mm. to suffer, innocent mm. Palestinians, mm. and and and, and the, the Americans have a sufficient sense of justice mm -hmm. yes. and fairness yes. that if they know the facts, mm. then uh, they will form opinions, mm. and those opinions can be translated into decisions mm. by policymakers. Mm. Uh, that, 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 that will, will hopefully force uh, uh, American policy uh, to, to be more even and, f and fair in this area, uh, which, which would mean uh, the end of the occupation uh -huh. and the beginning uh, of, of the promise of a new life for the Palestinians. This is Mr. Uh, Israel. Welcome. Is, uh, horrible nice hands, and how are you, sir? Good to meet you. Nice try, to meet the, you. try the three hand approach here. Horrible. Yes, yes, All right, All right. Yes. whatever. Yes. Yeah, whatever. Okay. whatever. Okay. Okay. Let me get out. Okay, okay. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 What is our schedule? I believe it's open. It's, it's open. It's okay. dynamic. Shall we say. dynamic. And dynamic. Flexible, okay. as you say. Yeah. <laughs> we go to Kosaba City and receive what we go to do there. Okay? Okay. 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 okay so, bye bye. Uh, we'll see you. The mayor okay. uh, thank you. The mayor of Kosaba? Uh, ah. Kalkilia? Uh, you can do it. Right. If I if pass the code or not, time. With their mission. Ah, with their mission. You haven't now. No, if you can, it's all right. Okay. okay. We didn't have permission. I have to ask two days before. Within 48 hours, they give permission. We have. Right. So we leave you here. Okay. Bye bye, sir. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Okay. Bye bye. Oh,
وموفق ان شاء الله بال بالانتخابات الجاي Now you are standing in Fasaba city, belong to Kalkiria city, and the board at the line, green line pass here. It means it's only two cities nearest. Pass between. Between. The green line, I don't talk except at Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And if I know the people in, Kal in Kalkiria, I know the people in Fasaba, I know I am very optimistic. Mm -hmm about the relationship between the two cities. Not only, only relationship, I talk about economic and everything. We tried before, we tried after Oslo. And if people said it to you that Oslo is fell down, I told you it's not successful successfully, but it was successfully. Uh, what, what do you think is this policy of uh, what you mean about of, of the wall and the expanding settlement? I don't think that they have to build the, 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 the wall. But if the, the relationship between Palestine and Israel will be okay, all the wall will go down. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm very optimistic. And I, I feel that something go on. Something good will happen between the two countries. And I don't care about Palestine and, uh, and, uh, and uh, Israel, I don't care about that. I care only the relationship between Kalkila and Fasaba. And I tried before, we tried before, it was successfully. And I'm sure in the future will be very good relationship between the two cities. And you can help us to do it. Because as I told you before, after the also, Oslo agreement was here, very, very good uh, relationship between the two cities. Mm -hmm. And if a little, little help for outside, we can do it. Mm -hmm. We can do it as Fasaba and Kalkilia, and Israel as Palestine uh, people. Don't believe me. Look around. That's, that's the east side, right? You know, it's a special this is for you. The sunset and the color is lovely and the quiet is peacefully. You only have to look to feel and the peacefully is... in this area. I don't know if you know, but we have underground water yeah. between the mountain until the, the, the road, not far away from here. And we like to build a relationship between the people of Palestine and people of Israel and myself. I am very, very optimist. But, you know, we sit here in Fasaba and we care about the relationship between Kalkila, between the two cities. We try to build a, a relationship with Ginsil in Florida and to do something, uh, to, to try to build a twin city between the three cities. I think... Using an American bridge. I think, I think, not a little push from outside, we can build here in this area very nice relationship. This area is uh, known about the orange Trees. Tree. Yeah, I that was, uh, yeah, uh, that's called Sharon area. You know, if you divided the center of Israel, this is Sharon area. It's uh, between the north and the center, and it's well known about the good oranges. Yeah. Used to be a lot of oranges trees here. Now, is that the Jaffa oranges? That's right. When I was in London, I was a student at the London School of Economics many years ago. And we got we had the uh, the Jaffa oranges were the special yeah, treat. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's plenty. That's fine. Food. Yeah, that's plenty. <laughs> okay, is, is, is this any good for? Okay. <laughs> you know what this food? It's called a persimmon. Oh, a persimmon. Persimmon? persimmon. Yeah. Persimmon. Oh, that. <laughs> In July, we make a big 
meeting between Palestinian people and Israel. More than 1,000 Palestinian people standing in Kalkilia city and big four or five hundred Israel stand in there yeah. and we talk by phone each another. Yeah, yeah. But it was it was sad to see, you know, when we got close to the wall, the, the area that it had been a vibrant uh, place with the restaurants and shops and so forth and and now they're all gone. Yeah. And, uh, In the 2005 Kalkilia municipal elections, Hamas swept every seat. Uh, the thing that, is, that really touches me is I see, <clears throat> on the other side, I see these happy little Palestinian children. And then I see the children that we saw here. Yeah. Same kind, happy. Sure. Uh, they look to us for their future. Yeah. There is no permission. It's under here. There's they no are guarantee. on the plane. They are in good condition. You can't come. In bad there condition, sit down. No it's way. It's up to the soldiers who are standing on the checkpoint. Do whatever you, he wants with everyone. I have now permission. Right. I took it uh, something. Today, I received it. That's can we see it? Oh, yeah. Permission. That would be fantastic to see that. What do you think of And it took us more than four years to have that permission. Not have any permission. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, his mother, you know, we can't just want to visit her any time. It's impossible to do so. We have to go by checkpoints and checkpoints and checkpoints. This is permission, you know? And the first time they gave it to us. Well, and this took four years. This took four yeah. years to get. Yeah. We, mm. we did not have this that. This is permission. Thing. This is permission to go to Barta, you know. Okay. Here for a clinic in Barta. And it's how many meters, kilometers away? Here from twenty <laughs> kilometers Less than from 20 here. Meters Less. Away. I have permission to go. I took it from the first of January. Right. The fifth of January. You see. Uh, I this is to go to Barta Jinin. It's, a, it's village. a village in the uh, in the line, you know. The wall it expires. Does it expire? Or is yes, it it's it's expired for three months. Oh, just for three months. Yes, yeah. from for here, from and it's for him the only. January to April. You you only, nobody else. Yes, for me as a doctor. Yeah. Okay. This is for my work, just for medical reason. Wow. This is, they have two th or three villages which are closed. Yes. All the people who lived in these villages must have the permission to go outside and inside it. It's surrounded and by And we AIDS. as a doctors visit them monthly or weekly right. to treat people how many, there. How many people live in these villages? Few, about 7,000, 10,000, not more. And they have to go inside in and outside village. to a gate, you know, mm -hmm. every day. This gate day. is opened from 5 o'clock morning to 10 o'clock at night, night, 10 p.m. So they ask the doctor to come to them because they just mm -hmm. can't come and go. So yeah, they ask them, please come to us mm -hmm. so we can be treated. And we make this permission to go. And it's not hmm. in the green line, it's outside the green outside line. The green line. Yeah. It's on the really? line. It's on the line. On the part line. of it is inside the green line and part of it is outside the green line. But the wall takes it all inside the green inside Israel, let's say. That was a statue made by a German artist, I think, and it was part of the demolished cars and demolished houses and there was a demolished ambulance that killed Dr. Khalid Suleiman.
You see, when you give people the vote, you give people a chance to express themselves at the polls, they, uh, and, and, and if they're unhappy with the status quo, they'll let you know. It's a great thing about democracy. It uh, provides uh, a look into society. And yesterday, the turnout was significant, as I understand it, and, it was, and there was a peaceful process as people went to the polls, and that's positive. But what's also positive is, is that it's a wake-up call uh, to the to the leadership obviously people were not happy with the status quo uh, the uh, people are demanding honest government the people want services they want to be able to raise their children in in an environment in which they can get a decent education and they can find health care and so the elections um, should open the eyes of the, the old guard there in, in, uh, in the Palestinian territories. I like, their, I like the competition of ideas. I like people who have to go out and say, vote for me and here's what I'm going to do. There's something healthy and, uh, about a system that does that. And so uh, the, the elections yesterday were very interesting. On the other hand, I don't see how you can be a partner in peace if you advocate the destruction of a country as part of your, of, of your platform. And I know you can't be a partner in peace if, you have a, uh, if, if your party has got an uh, a, a armed wing. And so the um, uh, elections just took place. We, we will watch very carefully about the uh, formation of the government. But, um, I will continue to remind people about what I just said, that uh, if, if, you're, if your platform is the destruction of Israel, it means you're not a partner in peace, and we're interested in peace. I talked to Condi uh, twice this morning. Uh, she called President Abbas. Um, she also is going to uh, have a conference call today about the quartet, with the quartet, about how to keep the process on the road to peace. Steve. Uh, yes. Are you questioning the Prime Minister about not resigning? We would like him to stay in power. If Israel has, a, has something to satisfy the Palestinian people concerning their borders, concerning the detainees, concerning our security, our geographical linkage between Gaza and West Bank, just to give hints, practical, practical steps to convince the, 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 the Palestinian that something is different from the previous policy, I think we can look for anybody, <coughs> for American embassies or ex-embassies. We can uh, look for Egypt. We can look for anybody as a third element to discuss that. Once we reach it to a final conclusion and be dead sure that something can be squeezed from the Israeli side, at that time we are going to discuss that, frankly, inside the parliament in order to see what is the proper step later on. But now, we have no intention at all 
to speak with the Israeli on the previous style, just talking, 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 and ending by nothing. How many agreements done between the Palestinian Authority and Israel? Oslo Agreement, Y Plantation Agreement, uh, Sharm el-Sheikh Agreement, many, many, and, and they, nobody is committed to this agreement. So the people are not trusting this agreement, not trusting this meeting, they are not trusting the will of Israel. Now, Olmert said very, very simple statement. It was very difficult that this is the border of Israel. Jerusalem is, will be united under the Israeli control. The settlement around Jerusalem will be a land of Israel. And I accept two-state solution. Who is going to accept that? Who? The quartet concluded that it was inevitable that future assistance to any new government would be reviewed by donors against that government's commitment to the principles of nonviolence, recognition of Israel, and the acceptance of previous agreements and obligations. Uh, the, those who have been uh, elected by the Palestinian people have an obligation. And uh, that obligation is to speak to the aspirations of the Palestinian people for a better life and for a peaceful life. Now that peaceful life can, uh, the quartet has reiterated, be achieved only through a two-state solution that um, recognizes the right of Israel to exist, that is a commitment to nonviolence, uh, that uh, undertakes the obligations of the roadmap. And I should just mention that there are a set of obligations that have been, over that have been taken by Palestinian leaders uh, over uh, more than a decade, and those obligations are noted here. Um, it is uh, incumbent now on all to, um, to uh, insist that any future Palestinian uh, government will indeed live up to those obligations, and that is what uh, we have done here today. After the election, after the vote, that chose Hamas to be uh, the representative of the Palestinian people. As my brother Khaled Mishal uh, said, we are a stick to the demands of our people. And we will never uh, put them aside. I mean, the demands of our people. I would like uh, you to know and to reflect also to the people in your countries that when the American uh, administration stresses on us or on the Arab uh, governments also to put pressure on us to confess, to recognize Israel first, this is really unjust uh, condition. And if they boycott the aid to the PA, that means one thing that the, uh, Palestine, the people of Palestine will have no other choice just to, to defend his rights, to defend his people, and to struggle for, uh, uh, to get these rights. So the weather, the climate will be in the whole region unstable. I would like to stress that if uh, the, uh, the I mean, financial aid is stopped about our people. Our people will have no choice, no choice other than to struggle and to continue the struggle. And that will, you know, ref uh, will be uh, reflected on the whole region. Following the 2006 election, the U.S. and Israel supplied Fatah security forces with rifles, money, and training while applying sanctions to the Hamas-led government. Hamas fighters kidnapped an Israeli soldier, Gilad Shalit, triggering a bloody but inconclusive regional war between Israel and Lebanese resistance fighters allied with Hezbollah. In 2007, Hamas routed Fatah security forces from the Gaza Strip. Israel declared Gaza a hostile entity and laid siege to the territory. In 2008, Egyptian intermediaries facilitated a ceasefire between Hamas and Israel, temporarily ending cross-border rocket fire from Palestinian militants. At the conclusion of the ceasefire agreement, hostilities resumed, resulting in the most devastating attack against Gaza in history.
why it was targeted by the IDF, nobody knows what was the reason. There were no resistance here, there were no people even, yeah. and there were other Palestinians. But after the Palestinian uh, militants has targeted this school several times, all the international and foreign staff has left the area, and only the Palestinians who were educated outside, who were uh, dealing inside. Actually, we faced a lot of cases that have been affected um, uh, strongly after the war. They were screaming, they were crying, they were shouting. Uh, some of them uh, were um, going separated from other students. So we have different uh, cases. I had in my first grade class, sometimes when we finish an exercise, I'll give them small sheets of paper so they could draw. I'll have students draw me uh, a little war between Israelis and Palestinians, and these are first graders, and I'd, and I'd be surprised. I had a kid draw me um, an ambulance over and over again. Every time I give him a paper, he'd draw me an ambulance with a Palestinian flag on it. There was a time about a month ago where there was problems going on in Jerusalem and they had all the streets closed and only a few students were capable of coming to my fourth grade classroom. And the whole time, one of my kids kept, kept uh, one of the boys actually, he kept saying, are the Israelis gonna come here? Are they gonna come into the classroom? What if one of the Israelis comes right now? What if he comes into the classroom? What is he gonna do? What are we gonna do? Where are we gonna go? And he was freaking out the whole class. He was really worried and he made everybody else worried in the classroom. The whole time he was there, he couldn't sit. He kept, he kept thinking the Israelis were gonna come into the school and take everybody or do something to them. Um, that's how they all feel. That's how they all feel. If, if a Jewish soldier, soldier right now walked by the school, everybody would know about it and everybody would be freaking out. Even though he wouldn't be doing anything. But because our perception of them is not good. That's just how it is. And the kids are affected by it, they really are. Once there was um, there was an Israeli police car outside the school. None of the kids wanted to leave. They were afraid that the police car would do something to them. It was a police car, not a soldier. I am very hopeful for the future. I really, I really do think that things will get better, inshallah. I think Palestinians need to first discover themselves and who they are and what it is they want before ever advancing. We don't know who we are. We don't know what we are. People think that um, it's, the, it's only the Palestinian problem and that's it, it ends there. No, we also have to deal with ourselves and then we can go on from there. That's what I believe. But I do think it's gonna happen. I do believe it's gonna happen, inshallah. Following the establishment of a far-right-wing coalition government in Israel under Benjamin Netanyahu, tensions have escalated dramatically in the occupied territories.